All right. So let's get started for today. So like I said, guys, I'm Professor Peters. Thank you guys so much for joining me with Aldron with Mr. Peters. Very first live session of 2023. I am so excited to be here with you guys. So the first thing we're going to start off with is fractions, okay? And I'm going to touch very shortly on algebraic fractions just for the purpose of simplifying. So when we're talking about algebraic fractions, guys, we're just we're going to have fractions that have variables in them. And with these, right, it starts off very simple, meaning we're just going to multiply straight across and then simplify where possible. But for, to, for my students who are in high school or in the higher levels of math, please make sure you guys revisit this because when you go into rational expressions and um, radicals and rationalizing the denominator, it is all based off the foundations of those fractions. All right. So we go through and we multiply straight across and we get 6x over 7x. And just like any fraction, if we're able to simplify, your teacher is always going to tell you to simplify. And we know that in this problem right here, we can't make 6 over 7 any smaller. But we can cancel out this x and simplify this to just 6 over 7. So when we talk about algebraic fractions, guys, just remember that we're going to have some variables also in there. But what I really want to focus on is going to be just adding and subtracting fractions. And we're going to touch on mixed fractions and improper fractions. So when we look at our second problem for today, and let's just switch colors, right? So we have the problem 3 over 8 plus 7 over 12. And remember, guys, the foundation, these are the basics. So when we look at this right here, we know that we cannot add or subtract fractions if they do not have the same denominator, right? If we're multiplying, it doesn't matter. But when we're adding and subtracting, we have to have the same top number, I mean, bottom number. <laughs> All right, so when I look at this, I'm thinking about all the multiples of 8. 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, and so on, All right? And then I think of 12. 12, 24, 36, 48. So a common denominator for both of these is going to be 24. So let's rewrite our 24 for our denominator. Now, we know we have the same denominator. We have to go back to the first fraction. What did we multiply 8 by to get 24? And whatever that number is, we're going to make sure we go back and also multiply the top number by the same quantity. So I multiplied 8 times 3 to get 24. When I multiply 3 by that same number, we are now going to have 9 over 24 right? So we multiply by three. Let's put that out here, right? Now, this second fraction, right, trying to get that same denominator, multiply 12 times two. So we know we multiply by two. So that means I have to go back now and multiply seven by two as well. So now, right, all the magic's coming together. We're starting to smile now because we realize, okay, we got the same denominator. Now we are able to actually add. And when I add these two together, I'm going to get 23 over 24. Now a rule of thumb that I always tell my students, get in the, just get into the um, idea, the concept of always simplifying. Always look to simplify if you can. But when we look at this problem right here, 23 and 24, there's no number that we can divide both of these by and get an even number to make it smaller. So what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to leave that as it is, okay? So this would be our final answer, okay? So now what I want to do is we're going to switch over, and I want to do a, uh, a different problem, I should say. 
So with this problem, we're going to work a little bit with a, what I would say is a mixed fraction, okay? And a mixed fraction, guys, just remember that a mixed fraction is going to have a whole number and then a partial fraction. So we'll have something like two and one half, right? That is a mixed fraction. So now what I'm going to do, the problem that they give us, right, we have, oops, <laughs> a little bit too excited to be with y'all tonight. So we have one and two over nine. And we are going to add a negative two and three ninths, right? So, oops. This is not three ninths. Sorry. So this is going to be two and one third. You know, we can't make the problem that easy by giving you guys the same denominator. All right. So we have our problem down now, guys. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my time and show you two different ways to solve this, because one way is not one. One size doesn't fit all. Everybody might have a different way they'd like to do this. So we're not even going to worry about this, this negative yet. I'm going to worry about, well, let's just switch colors for this bad boy to stick out. I want to worry about this denominator, right? Because they're not, they're not the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite both of these fractions. So we'll have 1 over 2 ninths plus negative 2. And then what would be our new fraction? So I, I kind of spoiled it a little bit earlier, but we know if we're trying to get three to nine, right? That means we have to multiply top and bottom by three. So now I have the same denominator. We go back and make sure we multiply the numerator to get three over nine. And now we are able to combine these mixed fractions okay so the first thing i'm gonna do is let's focus on the whole number one plus negative two right that's gonna give us a negative one so imagine that you had one dollar and you owed your friend two right that means you you still have to pay them one dollar so you're one dollar in the hole you're in the negative because you still owe them now we go over to our fraction and we could rewrite this so remember that 2 over 9 plus negative 3 over 9 is basically the same thing as saying 3 over 9 minus 2 over 9. Because the signs are opposite, one fraction is positive, one is negative, we are going to subtract, meaning 3 minus 1, and then from there, we're going to keep the sign of the larger number. But just remember, guys, this is one whole this is one whole entire fraction guys so our answer would be negative one and one ninth okay and what i want to do is i want to circle this right here and then what we want to do is we're going to go back and see if we could turn this into a improper fraction and see if we would get the same answer okay all right so let's do this Uh, you know, this is erase the whole thing, make it faster. All right, so we rewrite the problem now, right? So we have one and two ninths, and we're going to add negative two and one third. So what I'm going to do first, guys, is I'm going to make sure that I do the same thing with the denominator. Let's make sure we have the same denominator. So we're going to have one and two ninths plus negative two and three ninths. Now, if you guys remember when we're talking about turning a improper, uh, a mixed fraction to an improper fraction, what we do is we multiply denominator and the whole and that whole number, right? So we multiply these two 
and then we add the numerator to it. So once I do that in this problem here, I am going to get nine, right? So we have nine plus two. We're gonna have 11 over nine plus, and remember this is still negative, and we're now gonna go ahead and do this very same thing, okay? So let's see. So we're gonna get 18, we're gonna get 21, right? So now we're gonna have negative 21 all over nine. And I'm gonna use my calculator just to double check. It's been a very long day, but seriously, guys have a calculator, just double check sometimes, okay? So let's see. Yeah, I was right, tripping. All right, so let's get back to this, right? So now if we look at this now, we could combine these, right? And remember, like I said, one positive, one is negative. So we're going to subtract. So when I do 21 minus 11, this is going to give me a negative 10 over 9, right? So now I'm going to show you how this and this is the same exact answer. And whichever one you guys feel more comfortable with, do what's best for you guys. Because that's how math is. There's a lot of ways to get to the answer. You have to pick the choice that best works for you. So I look at this, right? We have an improper fraction and we want to turn it into a mixed fraction, right? So think about it like this. 9 goes into 10 at least one time, right? We know it's negative. And then what is left over? 1 over 9. So if you guys look here, we got the same exact answer, but we did it two different ways. So this is what I mean, guys, when I say, hey, we're working with mixed fractions and improper fractions, okay? But before we wrap this topic up and we go on to the next one of long division, let's just do one more problem. And let's throw in a subtraction problem in there for us today. All right, let's erase the board. All right, so we're going to do a quick one to wrap this one up. We have 5 over 21 minus 6 over 7. So we look at this, guys, same thing, right? Denominators are not the same. But I know that 7 can go into 21. So let's just rewrite this fraction. And what we're going to do now is we're going to now multiply 6 over 7 by 3. Because once we do that, we are going to get that denominator of 21 here. And then we multiply 6 and 3 we will have 18 over 21. So for my, my, my students who aren't that good with the positive and negative numbers, like I wasn't in middle school, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Just remember, we have five out of 21, right? And we're gonna take 18 out of 21. And what you, the thing that I want you guys to focus on is that, hey, you are taking a larger number from a smaller number, right? So just please remember that your answer is going to be negative, all right? Because I'll see students go through this, do an outstanding job, and then just forget the sign, okay? And we'll end up with negative 13 over 21. All right. So last problem for fractions. What I want to do is go back and touch up on division. So I did two videos earlier this week on long division, and I just wanted to come back and just touch up on it a little bit for you guys. Hopefully you like these problems that I have for you all. Let's see, which one do I want to do? Okay. So we're going to start off, we're going to start off with a single digit number, right? So we have nine. Right, and we're trying to see what number times nine is going to give us 864. Right, so 
So the problem is 864 divided by 9. So when we talk about division, so when we're talking about division, guys, just remember that we are going to divide from left to right, meaning, hey, we're going to start off with this single digit. Nine cannot go into eight. No problem. If you need to, we could put a zero on top as a placeholder in case you're a student that you may forget. You don't have to, though. So now we're going to make this eight into 86. And I remember my timetable is pretty good. Nine times nine is the closest we could get to 86 without going over it. So I, let's, let's put 81 here. And we always subtract. When we're, when we're doing division, we always subtract. We find a difference. And now we have five as a remainder when we subtract. Now, from this point here, just remember that it's repeated division, right? So now we look and we say, okay, can nine go into five? And if you don't like that terminology, think about it like this. Can you divide five by nine evenly? As in, can you get a whole number? Oh, so what we do is we go over to the next digit and we're going to bring it down, right? So now we're saying to ourselves, can we divide 54 by 9? And the answer is yes, we definitely can. And I believe once we multiply 9 times 6, right, we are going to get 54 as a product. Remember, product is just the answer once you multiply, right? Exactly. So now, boom, we're done with the problem, aren't we? There's no remainder, and there are no more digits for us to bring down and divide. So when we look at this problem, we have an answer of 96. And just remember, if you doubt yourself or if you don't think it's the right answer and your teacher doesn't allow you all to use calculators, hey, by the way, that's why I liked high school, man. You guys should be able to use calculators. It's good to know it. Like, you know, mental math, is, is there's nothing that beats it. I'll be real. But for, for speed purposes, you know, the time limit in class, use your calculator, double check. So we go through and we multiply. And what we notice is we are going to get 864 as a product once we multiply 96 times 9. So this is just making sure that we got the right answer. Okay. So that was our first single digit division. Let's see if we could uh, kick it up a little bit and let's jump into some larger numbers. So we have our next one. We have 1,728, and we are going to divide that by, I don't know why I put a comma. <laughs> I'm sorry about that, guys. All right, we're going to divide this by 8. So we know what's going to be under the division symbol and what's going to be outside, right? And the thing I love about math for me personally, it's the same steps. I know sometimes it may be confusing, but for the most part, guys, it's really the same steps over and over okay that's why they say repetition and practice with math is just it's key that's how you get the a plus all right so i do I, I start off can i divide one by eight no can i divide 17 by eight i can so what number or what do we multiply eight by to get to 17 without going over it and you guys are absolutely correct Two. So once we multiply eight times two, we get 16. And now we are going to subtract, right? And our remainder is one. So now the process restarts over, right? It surely does. And I'm aggravated just like you. <laughs> so we can't divide. So we're going to go to the next digit and bring it. Oh, not. We do go to the next digit, but I drew mine to the wrong one. Sorry. So we bring down our next digit and we say to ourselves, all right, Peters, what's going on here? And there's nothing going on, guys. The only difference is now we're going to have one, right? Eight times one. Because if we use two again, we're going to go over 12 and that is not what we want. Mm -mm. So let's do this. We're going to subtract eight. 
Once we do that, we have a difference of four. Process starts back over, right? Meaning, can you divide four by eight and get a whole number? Nah. So what do we do, Peters? Go on to the next digit. So we go to the next digit, bring that boy down, right? And, and what happens here, guys? What really happens here? The same thing. So luckily for us, we're not going to have a remainder because eight times six gives us exactly 48. So when we have exactly 48, that means we're going to have no remainder left over. All right. So we did, I did two, video, two videos on division this week. Please make sure you guys go back and check that out. It's very helpful. Some very quick, some very quick steps for you just to refresh your mind. But what I want to do in this one, um, I really want to focus on some larger numbers in this last problem because I know that you guys could do those smaller numbers, but those longer problems is normally when the issues come in. So let's let's do a larger number this time and let's see how can Peters and you guys, you amazing students, how can we do this together and get it right? All right, so that's 47, right? So we have 15,651 divided by 47. So me, I'm going to be real with you guys. I'm just like, oh, man, this is a large number. So I'm going to tell you what Peters would do to try to make this a little easier, right? This is like a guessing check. So I say to myself, okay, 47 cannot go into 15. We all know that, right? But 47 can definitely go into 156. Now we're thinking to ourselves, oh, man, I got to do all this multiplication, multiply 47 times 2 times 3 times 4, trying to figure out where or how close, what number will get us close to this without going over. So what I normally would do, I would look at it, I would round this to, like, okay, 160, and I would round this to 1 um, to 50, I'm sorry. So I know that if I multiply 50 by 3, I should get 150, right? And 47 is less than that. So I'm going to skip the whole 47 times 2 because I feel like that's too small. So let's go out to the side and do 47 times 3. And honestly, guys, it's a lot of guess and check. When it comes to the long division, it's a lot of go out to the side, pick a, a random number that makes sense, and kind of guessing and checking. So 47 times 3, right? We get 1 plus 2, 12, 14. That's 1. Yeah, 21 plus 2, 12. All right. So we get 141, if I'm not mistaken. And let's just try. Well, actually, no. We don't need to try 4 or times 2 because think about it. If we add 47 more, definitely over 156. and Multiplying by two, that's, that's going to throw off our whole answer, okay? So let's put three at the top. So we're going to subtract 141. And once we do, we're going to get, let's see, five, one. And I, I, I noticed something, right? It's kind of the same. So we know we can't divide 15 by 47. What are we going to do? Next digit. So now we are going to bring the five down. So right here, just pause. Before we're even thinking of doing anything, just say to yourself, hold on, Peters. What's really going on right now? Because when you, when you think about it, right, we already kind of have the answer. It's three. 155, the closest we could get to it is 141 without going over. So I'm not even going to really do too much math work. I'm going to put three down. Right. Come down here. We're going to subtract, find a difference. And once we do, we're going to get four. One. So now we have 14. Right. And I say to myself, all right, cool. We're almost done. Now let's let's bring down the next digit because we cannot divide 14 by 47. So my last digit is one. Bring this all the way down. I don't know why I drew my arrow that long. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about me. All right. And now we notice that, hey, 
this might divide evenly, meaning there is no remainder. So let's put another three, right? Because 47 times three is going to give us 141, and we will be able to finish off our problem with no remainder. That's why I love this math, man. No reading, straight numbers, same process over and over. It's amazing, man. All right. So we're going to take a little break right now from uh, the division. Like I said, I did a, a video earlier on how to divide with a single digit and how to divide by two digits. So if you need some more help on that, please go watch those videos. Comment down below if you need more videos on it. We're thinking about doing one where there's remainders because I know sometimes that could be tricky. All right. So let's erase this. And um, at this point, we are going to finish off the day, I believe, with some equations. All right. So let's check these problems out. And then we are going to get into it. All right. So we got our equations. So let's, let's start it on out. So the first problem says 12 is equal to 5x minus 13x minus 44. Now, a, a very special tip I want to give you guys in math is always put yourself in the best position to answer the problem. And what I mean is, look at this problem here, right? I was one of those students, I don't like it like this. I never liked it like this. So what I want to do is, I just want to flip the equation over. You don't have to do this if you feel comfortable with it, like, with it being like this. But I just like it like this better. I don't know why I like my x is on the left side of the equal sign, and then what is equal to on the right. So if you're someone like me, use everything to your advantage, guys, okay? It's math. It's like a puzzle. It's a puzzle. So the first thing I want to focus on is, do we need to distribute? There were no parentheses, so we do not have to distribute. Next step, let's focus on, is there any like terms to add on the same side? Because what students like to do a lot is they like to move things from one side to the other, and that is okay. You will still get it right. However, do it on the first side, do it on the same side first. And a common error that I've seen before, you know, and I, I know students are nervous. That's why they do this. Not that they don't know. They will do something like this. Guys, please remember that is wrong. This step would only be right if these two terms were on the opposite side of the equal sign. I've seen a lot of students make this mistake just out of rushing, being nervous or anxious during a test or assignment or quiz. So please just remember, if the terms are on the same side, you just add and subtract them straight up. There is no canceling of terms, okay? So let's just go back and erase this because, you know, I, I, I like my work to look neat. All right, so what do we do in this problem? Don't, even, don't worry about your x too much. And what I mean is just... You could write your x down. We're, we're focusing on the coefficients. 5 minus 13 is going to give me a negative 8x, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to bring down the rest of the problem. So at this step here, the only like terms that we have now are going to be 44 and 12. And don't forget that this 44 is negative. If you forget that, the whole problem changes. And this is what I mean. If you go through and you think this is positive and you say negative 44, or you might subtract 44, that's going to be wrong because this didn't cancel out. Negative 44 minus 44, that's negative 88. That's not what we want. So just please make sure that you do the opposite. So if this is a negative 44, we're subtracting 44, right? Same thing, same concept. That means I'm going to add. So negative 44 plus 44, that bad boy, gone. It's gone now, it's canceled. So only thing that's left on this left-hand side is the 8x. 
So now I go over here and I'm going to add. So let's, let's, let's clean it up. Here goes our equal sign. Negative 8x is on this side by itself. Cancel that term out. It's gone. And now we add to get, let's see, 56, all right? All right. So at, at this point here, guys, everybody knows or typically knows what to do. They're saying to us, negative 8 multiplied by a number, which is represented by x, is going to give us 56. So as long as you don't forget your negative sign, we're going to divide by negative 8 so that we can get x by itself. And when we go on the other side, we'll do the same thing. So we know that x is equal to 56 divided by negative 8, which is what? You better have said negative 7 now. If you said positive 7, oh, oh, oh man. Don't let it finesse you, man. You're better than that. So we got negative 7 as a final answer. And like I said, guys, you know all these steps. And if you want to double check your work, just plug it in. I'm not going to do it this time for the video's sake. But please make sure you guys double check your steps, okay? So this is problem number one. So we're going to go over and do about two more problems, and then we'll wrap it up today. Like I said, man, thank you guys so much for joining us on our live sessions. I do this for you guys because I've seen you guys email me and comment about live sessions. You guys like it. And it's a little bit more one-on-one. -on -one. I get to say more instead of squeezing it up in like a 10-minute video. It's hard. Okay. So let's go to problem number two in this bad boy. So problem number two, we it looks like we're going to have some parentheses. And I tell my students, when you have parentheses, please always think about distributing, not just multiplying. It's the same thing, but distributing. And the reason I say that is because students will make this very common mistake. And I'm going to show you what I mean. Shout out to all my left-handed people tonight, man. And to everybody watching. We appreciate you guys. So I don't like saying multiply. Because students will just go ahead and only multiply negative 2 and 4w. But if you look inside the parentheses, guys, there's more than one term, meaning we have to multiply more than once. So let's go ahead and break this down. And as I'm breaking it down, I'm, I'm going to tell you or identify some common mistakes I've seen. Number one, this is a negative 2. So once we multiply negative 2 and a positive 4, that's going to be a negative product. When we go back and multiply negative 2 by positive 1, that is going to be negative. Sometimes students will multiply, but the sign, you know, they forget the sign. So please don't forget that. Two, do not subtract these. They're not like terms, right? One has a W, one does not. So we cannot combine it. And even if it had a W, I'm going to tell you the finesse of the year. And they always get students with this. When I was a student, they got me. It, let's, let's just say, I'm going, to, I'm going to write this in blue. Right? Let's put a little small W. What they love to do is do something like this where this number has a W. But think about it. You don't remember, but when you're solving the equations, you have to do the distribute. You have to distribute first before you subtract. So please don't fall for that trick. I'm telling you, I used to put it on my quizzes all the time. And my students would be like, oh, man, Peters, you got me on that one. All right. So I told you some, um, some possible errors that you guys can make. Please look out for those. So let's go through and not actually solve. So we have minus 8w minus 2, and this is equal to w minus 58, right? Let's double check 8w minus 2. Perfect. Now, like I said before, before you start trying to move anything to the other side, try to combine what's on the first side first, or on the same side first, I should say. Sorry. So we can add that or subtract. So once we do, we are going to have... 5w minus 2 is equal to w minus 58. Now, at this part here, there's so many ways to solve, really two. 
we could move five to this side and then we could move 58 to the other side. Because what I always tell students is to solve properly and have the correct sign, variable has to be on one side, constant has to be on the opposite side of the equal sign. They cannot be on the same side and for you to solve the equation. Your sign is more than likely going to be wrong. If you get it right, it may just be some luck, but I ain't hating on you, man. Get your point. <laughs> All right. So we could do it that way. Or... Or if you wanted to do it the other way, we could bring two over to this side, and then we could bring W over to this side. As long as variables are on one side and numbers with no variables are on the opposite side of the equal sign, we will be good. And what I'll do in this problem is I'm going to do both ways just to show you guys. Because like I said, this is for you. I do this for you. Love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. All right, so let's get this thing going. So let's subtract W. Gone. Sometimes students forget that this represents 1. 5 minus 1, 4W. And then we're going to bring the rest of the problem down. The reason I say that, guys, I've seen students just they just get a little bit uptight and nervous and they just forget. They just forget sometimes. Sometimes they'll, they'll put 5W to the second power. I've seen some interesting stuff. And it's not that you guys don't know, you just forget. All right, so now at this point here, we're gonna bring 58 over on this side by adding, right? Yeah, you, you better know that's not right now. I'm, I'm playing with you guys to see if you're paying attention. That's not right. So if the variable is on this side, Remember, we're going to have to move two to the other side because the idea is we want, we want them to be on the opposite side of the equal sign. So we cannot bring 58 onto the left side. If you do, then you have to then rearrange the formula and move four to the other side. That's too much steps, man. No, that's too much steps. We're bound to make a mistake. We don't need to do all of those steps. All right. So here... We're, like we said, we're going to move to, so it's on the opposite side of the equal sign. And what we get is 4W, because that's all that's left on this side, is equal to negative 56, right? And then at this step, we divide by 4. And we know W is equal to negative 56 over 4. And that will give us negative 14. Okay. But before we wrap this problem up, what I really want to do is go back and solve it a different way. So let's just go back right here. Let's erase all this. Okay. Ooh, all that, all that talking. All right, so we have 5w minus 2 is equal to w minus 58, okay? So we're going to do it the opposite way. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring our w's onto the right side, and we're going to bring 58 to the other side, okay? And I just want you guys to see that, hey, if you do this correctly, you will get it right. It does not matter, all right? As long as your signs are correct in steps. So we have negative 2 is equal to negative 4w, 1 minus 5, negative 4. And then we bring down the minus 58. At this step here, like I said earlier, we're at this step. We cannot bring 2 over onto the right side because now variable and constant. The constant is a number with no variable. They're on the same side. We can't do that, okay? So let's add this bad boy. Cancels out there. So what I'm going to do, let's bring this out to the side. So negative 2 plus 58 is going to give me 56 is equal to, and then on the left side, this is all we have now because the 58 is canceled, is equal to negative 4w. So we finish off by dividing by negative 4, 
And now we know that 56 divided by negative 4 is equal to W. So negative 14 is equal to W. And if you compare the answers, they're both right. There's different steps in solving, right? One has a variable on the left. The other has a variable on the right. Once your signs and your steps are correct, you will have the correct answer. Okay? All right. So we're going to do the last problem of the day. And like I said, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Please make sure you guys hit the like button for us. Let us know that you're enjoying our live streams. We do this for you. And we want you guys to be getting something out of the lesson, man, because we do it for you. All right. So my last problem for today, I'm going to throw a little monkey wrench in there, you know? Your teachers love these type of problems that are complex, meaning we do a couple steps. <laughs> but, you know, all, is, all that's happening, guys, is that you just have to really pay attention to your signs and steps. Because the more steps you have to take is basically the more likely you are to make an error, right? And that's, what, that's not what we want, okay? So we look at this problem here. And I, I want you guys to understand this is a puzzle. You're, you're like a police officer trying to solve a crime. It's like a puzzle and you're looking at like, hmm, how can I attack this? So anytime you see parentheses, guys, you should know that we need to distribute and we need to start there. So here goes the first parentheses. Here goes the second. 4x is not inside the parentheses. So we're not, we're not going to distribute 2 to 4x. No. Same thing on this side. Negative 4 is not inside the parentheses, so we're not going to distribute 6 to negative 4. That is a common error, and I'd like to continue repeating it because then it starts getting, it, that process, it gets drilled in your head. So now we distribute, right? 2x, don't forget that, minus 16 plus 4x is equal to and then we're going to go on the next side and do the same exact thing. And I'm doing it step by step so that you guys can see exactly how I do each step and how I get the answer. Okay? All right. So we distributed. And y'all know what I like to do next. Before we start moving things from one side to the other, let's just add what's on the same side. Positive 2x, positive 4x. So we have 6x minus 16 is equal to. So we clean this side up by just combining these two like terms. Now I go on to the other side. I said, all right, now, nah, Peters. I go on the other side. I said, okay, is there any other x's? No. But both negative 12 and negative 4 are like terms. Okay, 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 okay. So let's bring down the 6x. Okay, cool. Negative 12 minus 4. So I want you to understand, you can write this problem like this. This represents the same problem. You're combining two negative numbers. So when you combine two negative numbers, it's just going to be a larger negative number. So what do I mean? Act like the sign wasn't there. 12 plus 4 is 16, right? They're both negative, then 16 must be negative, right? There you go. And like I said, that's how I normally attack it. Whatever works for you guys. We're all here trying to help you guys come up with the best solutions for these things, okay? So we're here now, and we're, we're looking at it, and it looks funky. I'm like, whoa, it's the same thing on both sides. I got you. So what students will do, or what you need to understand is that this is an infinite solution. I was trying to write cursive, hold on. Oh yeah, there you go, infinite solution. I'll write it better, man, I'm sorry. All right, so what does this mean, Mr. Peters? I'm gonna tell you guys. This means that any number you plug in for x, it's gonna work. Both sides are always gonna be equal to each other. So it doesn't matter what number you plug in for x. You will always have the same, the same value on both sides. And I'm going to show you what I mean right here. 
So no matter what we do, right? This equation is always going to be equal to each to itself on both sides, right? Negative 16 is equal to negative 16. Or if we cancel out the 16s, 6x six is equal to 6x, okay? So we're going to wrap it up for our live stream today, guys. Please leave any comments down below if you guys have any questions on anything. We're going to upload this live stream later on in the night. Thank you guys for joining me today. Like I said, any topics, please email us. The email is going to be in the comment section once we, um, a video description section once we upload this. Thank you guys for joining me, man. It's Algeron with Mr. Peters. I'll see you next Wednesday for our, our next live stream, 6.30 p.m. At, like always. Thank you guys so much for joining, man. Love y'all.